Professionals use full frame. They have dignity inside. They wouldn't show up to a house with a crop sensor format. The audience members in the house would diffuse the tension by having sex with them. So why would anybody shoot on a crop sensor camera? <laughs> I'll tell you why. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. That was not planned. It just melted. It melted my whole life. Oh boy. We're trying something new here. I looked through all the film simulations to try to emulate, get as close to Canon colors as we could. Astia seems to be the only one in the ballpark of Canon color science. Move on. That was an F-log, the whole video. So enjoy watching a moron who thinks he's filming in Astia when he's just an F-log. Oh, how did I not look? I was testing them last night, and then I switched into F-Log to see if I could change Fuji to Canon colors. Oh boy, so how does Astia look? No one cares. So here's the deal. Full frame seems to be the ideal professional format. Medium format even better, but so expensive and slower kind of worse, heavy, so that's not really in the equation. Sorry, Fuji, you made a leap for mankind and I hope you break your neck, in theory, not physically. But not everybody wants to carry around a heavier full frame system, although we'll get to that. This, like right now, is much lighter than that full frame in its abilities. So like Fuji's not always lighter, be real with yourself. Micro Four Thirds, usually. Yes, but there's reasons people actually choose this. It's not always a downgrade. You think you're getting like full frame masterpiece and then it gets worse and worse the smaller the sensor gets. Not true. We got a Canon C100 Mark II Super 35 sensor. Worse than this full frame. I guarantee you, side by side 1080p Sony A7S III, you're gonna be drawn to that C100 image licking the screen before you can know what happened. Back off me, Gypsy. Why? Why? Some crop sensors have advantages to their full frame counterparts that make you want to choose them for that. For instance, color science. I think I prefer Astia profiles to whatever Sony can do. I've gotten close to mimicking Canon colors on a Sony, I, I do want to show you. Okay, here is my S Cinetone Canon Mimic. It's somewhat in the ballpark, kind of close. Next to Canon Boy, I just, I can't seem to get the yellow skin. For some reason, in my life, I think yellow skin equals jaundice. You have a liver disease, yet when I see it on a Canon camera, it pleases me. So I'm trying to replicate it with Sony. This is as close as I could get. We're no, not even anywhere in the ballpark. But when I switch to S-Log3 and use the Cine Match to change into a Canon R5 and make some tweaks in camera, reds down, yellows up, you have to admit that we are close to something. No? Come on, come on. Did the Sony look a lot better than the Fuji? Could you tell, could you see the full frame magic? You probably could, but some will prefer this. There's some cultures that prefer this hair too. Trust me, this is sought after, this look. You don't know what you're talking about down there. This hair, you don't wanna walk down the wrong alley in Saudi Arabia. People will mug you for that hair. This is well desired by women. Usually Micro Four Thirds will have the best stabilization, so if that's super important to you, and it should be, you might like have reason to buy into that tiny, useless, dying system. Super stable footage. All right, the whole point of this episode was to show you some Fuji Magic footage. This is just Eterna, beautiful, very sharp. I wanted to see when I switch into F-Log, is it less sharp? 
I do believe it is, even though my sharpness settings didn't change. For some reason, F-Log confirmed, less sharp. I can raise the sharpness in post to match it, and then we get superior dynamic range. So there's no reason not to shoot in log, but unless you're on the X-H2S, and then F-Log 2 makes things fall apart hard. If they're not ready for F-Log 2, they brought it out like, look at this, our new profile, it works, trust me. It doesn't work yet. They have to tweak some stuff because the 4K 120p falls hard. Now, I don't mean to alarm you, but I did manage to capture a squirrel. Never seen one. I thought they were extinct for a while, but they still exist, apparently, as I track and pan him. Oh my goodness, what a shot. If only he would look back at me as to wonder if he was safe now in the shadows of my heart. Look back. Oh, he's doing it. Not yet. There he is. He's noticing me. So if you look side by side, this is just HD 120p versus 4K 120p. It's not fair at all. But it was a very similar shot. The Sony looks much better. Now, will the X-H2S be as good in 4K 120p? It might be. Because every time I take this Fuji out, I notice the magic happens for Fuji, and it just looks so beautiful, the colors, you never have to do anything to it. Now, I captured the most magical moment anybody has ever captured in the history of Animal Planet. Sometimes you just get lucky with a shot like that. Like, that was just so cool. I didn't even see the moth in the background. I'm just trying to get this dragon black butterfly thing. And then this majestic white thing in the back is like, oh my God, they're meeting for the first time. It's like so cool. Like the other day I was on the Sony and I saw this butterfly and I was like, oh man, I press record, it's 240 frames per second. And then out of nowhere, this hornet comes and he's like attacking the butterfly. I'm like, oh my God, the drama. Oh, that drama today in nature, you're so mean. And the hornet flew off. He didn't even want any of the nectar from that spiky ball thing. He just wanted the butterfly not to have it. That's mean, mean spirited. In my opinion, Canon and Nikon with their APS-C, it's mostly only downsides, only like slight weight savings you get nothing beneficial about it. Nikon's APS-C doesn't even have stabe. Come on. But I tell you, every time I take the Fuji out, it, like even this, this is underexposed, but it's magic. A female robin dancing for me in the forest. That doesn't just happen. She took a bath and then flew up and I was like, wow, you're so magical. This is 120 frames per second. I think I got some 240. So she danced even slower. You believing that right now? Oh, she's wiggling. But I don't know, what is it? The colors, everything is blurry but her? Fuji gives you surreal images that don't seem possible. But when they happen, you realize that anything is possible. Wow, here's a little 4K 60p. See, it doesn't necessarily mean the image is better. It's just sharper. Now it actually looks worse. It's not as slow, it's not as majestic. It's sharp is disgusting. That's why I want 480 frames in 1080p, but nice 1080, like real 1080, not fakeness. Upsample, well, upsample your mom. Buying a Fuji X-H2S would be a dumb decision as an X-T4 and Sony A7S III owner. Like, why would I do it? You don't have to explain these things logically, you just do it. You pounce and then you deal with the aftermath afterwards. That's what aftermath means. Sony APS-C is a joke on purpose. They have nothing over full frame. There's no reason. You would never, unless you love those Sigma lenses, the trio, then maybe, but why? Just go into APS-C mode. Even their full frame has APS-C modes. It's not much lighter. It's a lot lighter. 
If ducks want to slowly travel through a swamp as a group, you want to be there to witness that. And it's beautiful and mysterious. Doesn't matter if any of them are in the shot. My new hobby is waiting for dragonflies to fly away. And they do it. They do it in slow motion. It's tough. You never know when they're gonna do it. And tracking them is impossible. If you want to follow them, that's my ideal. I follow it and see where it goes, but it's impossible. They are too fast. I think they eat leaves. Judging by this footage, he appeared to have taken a couple chews, had a little lunch, swaying in the wind, and then decided, okay, that was enough. That was enough for me. I don't have to eat the whole plate. I'm gonna leave now and go enjoy life. Overeating doesn't help us. Now, I'll be honest with you, I still, now that I have both the Sony and Fuji system for wildlife, you can see them in the background there. Very similar size. The Fuji's much lighter, I'll be honest with you. Noticeably lighter, but when that extends, it's still smaller and it's shrinking. Fuji build the quality, not what it used to be, but I, I think if I'm going out, I want to get some great stuff. I'm always going to bring the Sony. It's better. It's just sharper and the experience is better, more tactile. So like, why would I get an X-H2S? I wouldn't, but I might. Oh, little cat bird. You meow straight to my heart. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Doesn't matter that you're underexposed. I don't blame you for it. It's my fault. I'll take the blame on that one. You explore the cat, little meow bird. I mean, explore the forest, not the cat. They can be tough to film, I tell you. They're very inquisitive. They want to see what you're doing, but then they're also afraid at the same time. So like, oh, who's that? Oh, don't, don't look at me. They're trying to get out of the way, but then they're looking back at you. And they're very interesting, and then they sound like cats. That is too cute. So Fuji definitely has some advantages. Handheld, the stabilization is better. Until you want to move with it, then it's a little jerky. Don't ever move if you can. It's better than Sony in that sense. The color is better. Dynamic range may be equal. There's a lot going for it. It's almost as sharp. It's tough to pick between them. It's just, once you see full frame magic, it's hard to not want to bring that with you and be a part of that system. It's just better. Every system, Canon, Nikon, Sony, they're better than the crop sensors, but there's some things that are nice and you could live with yourself if you did make the mistake of buying into an APS-C or even worse, Micro Four Thirds system. I'm sorry to hear that. It's not bad. So how did Astia perform today? Is it less magenta in the face? I don't need a purple face. I just want to talk some shit and be handsome and envied in every culture for my long hands. So we're done. Thank you for buying everything I mentioned through the links. You know I leave links down there. You ever check them? Ice hunt for used deals on B&H and Amazon for you. All my links say, here's the new one or used, cheaper. That's the one I would buy, never new. Who would ever buy something new? You're a weirdo. Fuji Assassin t-shirts available in the shop. I'll go.